budget DSLR slash mirrorless for video. We arrived to the um, uh, to the cameras, you know, in the best budget gear video series, and I divided in two sections, you know, the best budget cameras because. I decided to speak separately about the best cameras for photography, the best budget cameras for photography and the best budget cameras for video. So this is the part two from the best budget cameras. Let's talk a little bit about it. Hello YouTubers, my name is Attila Mate from Blue Sky Photography and today I'd like to talk to you about the best budget cameras for videography, for video. Uh, and we are talking about DSLR or mirrorless cameras for video. I'm not um, covering also the camcorders and uh, that because it would be too long, you know. So I, I would like to talk only about the DSLR and uh, mirrorless cameras for video. And which is the best bang for your buck? Which camera is, gives you better image quality and uh, which camera has better abilities for the less money, you know, the cheaper as possible. So, uh, let's jump into it and let's see. The first camera which I can recommend and I, in my opinion, it is the best camera, the best bang for your buck, it is the Panasonic G7. Now, I have to tell you, this camera is amazing for the, for the price you buy, you know, it's, 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 just, it's just amazing. I mean, you pay for the camera $498 with the kit lens, $500 with the kit lens. Yes, it is a micro four thirds camera, it's true. Yes, it doesn't have image stabilization, it's true, but it's $498 with the kit lens. It shoots in 4K video. The 4K video is um, Ultra HD. It's not cinematic 4K, it's Ultra HD. And uh, it, in 24 frames and 30 frames per second. But it's a small camera, it's a light camera. It's, it's, I tell you, it's, it's handled very, very well. I mean, the build quality of the camera is good. It's not made out of aluminium. It's not about uh, metal alloy, no. It's made uh, out of plastic, but it's a very, very durable plastic. And it's the build quality, I would say it is very good. You don't have to concern, you, you don't have to be concerned about the, the build quality. Now, the, there is no weather ceiling in the camera. So if you go out in the rain or something, it might be a problem but you can get some cheap covers for that you know that's on ebay i mean that's not an issue i would say you know how many times you will you shoot in the rain you know it depends what kind of photography are you into or videography but now we are talking about the video so uh, yes and i don't even forget that this camera is pretty good for photography as well so 4k video in ultra hd mode 24 and 30 frames full hd video 1080p at 60 30 and 24 frames so there is no, uh, uh, it's a very strong slow motion capabilities in the camera, you know, but 60 frames a, f a second, it's pretty decent. I mean, it's, it's good enough, you know, it's okay. So 60 frames a second, 30 frames and 24 frames. Tilty flippy touchscreen. Now, Panasonic cameras, almost all have this uh, tilty flippy screens. So it's, um, it's, it's a great touchscreen. I mean, it's, you have no problem seeing in, in the sun, even in daylight, you know, it's, it's not an issue at all. Comfortable handling and great button layout. Now, this is really good, I have to tell you. I don't own the G7, but it was in my hand several times, I did try, and uh, it, it's, just, it's just ridiculously good, I tell you. I, it feels like almost like a DSLR. I mean, the, the, the style, it is like that, you know, like a small, like a miniature DSLR, something like that. But it feels very good in the hand and the button layout is excellent, I would say. If you are, or if you were a DSLR shooter, this camera, you will love it, I tell you. So, uh, microphone jack input. Yes, you have microphone jack input. You don't have uh, headphone input, but... Uh, you know how you get around, you know, I mean, you can, you can get around that, that's not an issue, you know, so, you, but in, most importantly, you have microphone jack, phone, uh, jack input, sorry. Now, this is the Panasonic G7, the, the biggest advantage is for videography, we are not talking about photography, 
because uh, that, that was a different video, obviously. And I think that for photography, there are much better cameras. If you are in photography, then, and you didn't see my video, then uh, please go to my channel or I will place a link up here so you can, you can watch that video. But if you are looking at this video on a mobile device or on a TV, you know, the annotations will not work, so you won't see the link what I posted up here. Then you will have to go into my channel and you will search in the content and you will see there, you know, camera reviews or camera comparison, the playlists, and you just go in there and you will find the video. So if you are in photography, I suggest that it's better if you look about that video, because in that video I speak about uh, the cameras, which I recommend and I think they are much better for photography than the G7 or the rest of the cameras over here. So the second camera. Only if you do photo as well and uh, 4K is not important to you, then this camera, it is very, very good for you. So, and this is the Sony A6000. Now, like, uh, like probably you know, if, if you are familiar with my channel and my videos, that I used to own the Sony A6000 for a pretty long time. And I have to tell you that I love that camera. I mean, that's, uh, it, it was a great little camera, you know. That's true that uh, uh, it, it doesn't have 4K video, it's, it's true that it doesn't have image stabilization, yes, but it was a great camera. I mean, the image quality, it is excellent. It is an APS-C size sensor. It's not, a, it's not a micro four thirds like the G7. It's a little bit bigger sensor, but it's a 24 megapixel sensor, but it has an internalizing filter. Uh, I wouldn't say that it is a big issue, but uh, you can see in my video where I compared the Sony A6000 with the Nikon D7200, which is again 24 megapixel sensor and doesn't have anti-aliasing filter. And that sensor is much more sharper. So when we get to the sharpness, the anti-aliasing filter is very important in video and in photo as well. So uh, Sony A6000, why I recommend this camera like in the second place? Because of his price again. I mean, this, this camera, it's $478 body only. I mean, it's, a, it's ridiculously cheap, you know, it's very cheap. And it's um, $628 with the kit lens. I mean, that's a good price, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's for an APS-C size camera. And like I said, if you are kind of into photography as well and you want videography and you don't have money, then this is the camera you wanna buy. Because this camera, it's great in photography and uh, also good in videography. Now, I have to tell you that I did a good few videos with the Sony A6000 and it's just brilliant. In 1080p, you know, it, it has, in Full HD, it has 60 frames, 50 frames, 30 frames, 24 frames. That's not an issue, you know, and, but unfortunately there is no 4K in it. So, um, tilt the screen, it, it, the screen it tilts out, up and down, but it doesn't flip out. So, it's kind of... Uh, it's not good if you if you plan for a vlogging or something like that, or if you want to see yourself, you know, it's not a, the best idea then for this camera because it will only tilt the screen, it doesn't flip out. So let's go further down a little bit. No microphone jack. Yes, there is no microphone jack on the camera. What I used to do because uh, I record my audio anyway on, a, on an audio recorder, so I, I used to record my audio separately and then in post, you know, when I was editing, then I synchronized the audio with the video. And uh, that's not a big job. That's very easy, actually. Even now when I use the camera that has microphone jack, you know, I don't like to bring around all the cables and everything. So I will record my video, uh, my, sorry, my audio separately. But that's only me. So it's, uh, it's up to you guys, which one you prefer. But the Sony A6000 doesn't have microphone jack and no headphone jack as well. So uh, now there is something what is very strong in Sony A6000 and generally in Sony cameras in video and that is the autofocus in the transitions, smooth transitions in the video and that is very important to get a, a great video. So if you, if you want to focus from this person to that person, the transition with Sony will be so smooth and so nice, you know, that it's unbelievable, I tell you. Like with Nikon, it's not nice at all. But with Sony, it is very, very nice. So this is a great advantage for the A6000. 
And uh, also, like I told you, it's a good enough photo cover. So you have to decide, guys. It's, it's your choice. Now, number three camera is the Sony A5100, A5100. Now, this camera is kind of, let's say, a small little A6000, you know? And uh, the, the, um, the, one, the first advantage of this camera, if you want to use for vlogging, you know, or something, now the, the this camera's screen will only tilt again like the, the so like the A6000 screen, but because it doesn't have a viewfinder, it will tilt up way as well, you know that so you can see yourself in the screen. Unlike the Sony A6000 that doesn't tilt up completely, you know that will tilt just a little bit, but this one will tilt up completely, so you can see yourself. Now this is the first uh, advantage of the A5100. And the second advantage, obviously, it is again that it's cheap. It's $448 body only and uh, $598 with the kit lens. Now, it, this is a very small camera. It is pocketable, you know what I mean? It's, uh, you, you, with the kit lens, you put the kit lens on it and you can stick it in your pocket, you know? It's, if you have a little bit bigger pocket, it's no problem, you know? It, it can fit in it. I don't say now that you can stick in a skinny jeans pocket, you know? That's not going to happen. But if you have a jacket and it has a little bit bigger pocket, you know, it will get in there. So, uh, the disadvantage of this camera, like I told you, it's no viewfinder, you know, that's the only disadvantage. Because other than that, it's almost like the A6000, you know. Even the autofocus system is great, you know, it's very close to the A6000. And uh, other than that, you know, it's, it's just like the A6000 and I have to tell you that it's pretty good camera, even for photography, you know, it's, it's not a bad camera, but there is no viewfinder. So if there is a sun, you know, bright sun, I used to get uh, some troubles, you know, with the A6000 when it was a bright sun. I had to use the viewfinder because I couldn't see on the screen, you know, so that would be a problem. But you can, uh, you can get some shade, uh, some sun, I don't know, how do you say that, uh, you know, how, how to explain that, you know, to the screen, you know, you can get some plastic shades you know over there that, that that will block the sun you know to hit the screen so you can get that if you um, if you want to but for this price you know for uh, 448 dollars body only i would say that it's um it's a bit expensive because it's 478 dollars the a6000 you know so it's better to buy the a6000 then than the, uh, the a5100 but if you want for vlogging or something you know a5100 is great. So, um, I don't put here any Canon cameras because, uh, first of all, they are not cheap. They are expensive. They, Canon has some very, very good cameras, DSLR cameras for video. I mean, they, and they have mic jack. They have, uh, most of them, they will have headphone jack as well, you know, and it's, it's great, but they are not cheap. They are great cameras with great advantages, but not cheap. So I don't put Nikon cameras because of the autofocus and I own Nikon cameras, you know, and they are not great in the autofocus, you know, it's, it's just uh, the example, the Nikon D7200, you know, if you, if you want to uh, just record yourself, you know, it, the autofocus will hunt just without any reason. I don't know why, just, just in, in, in every two, three minutes, even if you don't move at all, you just sit like that, you know, the autofocus will hunt and then refocus at you. And then after 10 seconds again, it hunts and, I don't know what is that, you know, but anyway, and uh, almost all of the cameras, Nikon cameras, they are not really good in video. So uh, for, for video, you know, I don't really um, uh, suggest to buy Nikon, you know. If you focus manually though, and if you don't mind this problem, you know, Nikon D5500, it's very good. It has a tilty screen, you know. And it's a touch screen. It's not everything. It's not uh, the menu is not uh, with touch screen, you know, like in the Panasonic or something. But there are some things which one you can you can do with the touch screen. And also the D7100 and the D7200. It is perfect, you know, for uh, for uh, photography and videography if you focus manually. Autofocus, it's just not really good on them. So I cannot recommend them. So guys, this is my, um, my opinion about the best budget video camera. And like I tell you, the winner would be the Panasonic G7. 
and I would say this is the best budget, you know, uh, video camera. This is the best bang for your buck, what you can buy. This is, here you get most for your money, Panasonic G7, period. If you uh, don't agree or if I left out something, please feel free and leave a comment down below and uh, let's discuss it in professional manner and let's help uh, others with information, you know, that which one is uh, the best budget video camera. And I hope you like this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and share my videos. Other than that, I wish you a nice day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Till I die